This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And we're back one more time. So For a really big story. A big, big story. We gave you the story of uh, Cora the elephant, our big star who had moved to Topeka. And maybe this was one of Cora's ancestors <laughs> in, uh, in Kansas that she came back to visit. You know, I'm working on a documentary on the plesiosaur that was found out near Fort Wallace. And, um, God, don't even get me started. Millions of years ago. Long, long time ago. And, of course, those dinosaurs and whatever, you know, category you would call those beasts were not did not coexist with man, despite the Flintstones, you know, and their uh, the educational value of that show. But mammoths did coexist. Mm -hmm. You know, they were here at the same time man inhabited the planet. And um, so this is the story. Dr. Rolf Mandel from KU and the Kansas Geological Survey, brilliant, brilliant man, uh, renowned around the world, and we're so lucky to have him right here. And he invited Dr. Jake and me out to the dig site where they found the mammoth. And that was pretty, I got to say, <laughs> it was pretty freaking cool, right? <laughs> it, was, it was really cool. And it's on private property. So the general public, you know, doesn't have access to this. And they're not digging all the time, just in the summer months. And whenever, uh, you know, the wind's not 120 miles an hour and and zero dark 30 or whatever. But uh <laughs> It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Huh. We've had some important fossils in Kansas. A woolly mammoth. A woolly mammoth. Isn't that just the coolest thing? Let's take a look. In July of 2011, a Scott County farmer was building terraces on a hillside in the Smoky Hill River Valley. As his machinery reconfigured the ground, he spied a couple of bones, a scapula or part of a shoulder, and an ulna one of the bones of the forearm, or foreleg as it were. The bones belong to a mammoth, a mammoth that called Kansas home 16,000 years ago. The Kansas State Historical Society sent out a crew to look over the site, and they were soon joined by Dr. Rolf Mandel, who is the Executive Director of Odyssey Geoarchaeology Program at KU. The Odyssey supported team has worked on the Sherman mammoth site for the past five years with Dr. Jack Hoffman directing excavations, Kale Bruner as crew chief, and crew Barb Crable, Paige Englert, Kevin Finyak, Chris Hoard, Lauren Johnson, Leela Joyce Seals, Stephen Keener, and Helen Sangster. Rolf said that one of the most interesting discoveries near the bones was a napping pile, essentially the scraps that are evidence of making or sharpening tools. This discovery was tantalizing because it might lead one to speculate that this mammoth was killed by hunters, a theory bolstered by the fact that it was on a hilltop and not in a low-lying marshy area or river bank or some more common site for discovering fossils and skeletons. There are no clear-cut marks on the bones that have been discovered, so while intriguing, there is not yet enough proof for this theory. While significant discoveries were made each subsequent summer at the site, the skull was not found until the summer of 2016, just as the crew were finishing up their last couple of days. The bones had not been deposited in a pile, but rather were distended, as if being washed slightly downhill. This would account for some of the bones showing more evidence of exposure and weathering. It is estimated that it took about 250 years for the animal to be buried. Even though human involvement remains unproven, it remains a tantalizing possibility as new artifacts are uncovered and studied. What an odyssey. Well, we're out of time again. And look at all the educational stuff we shared. Yes, I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas.